Hey folks, Jerry Stevenson, Chief Redneck in Charge at the Redneck Barbecue Lab, McGee's Crossroad, Benson, North Carolina. Today's video is how to make Canadian bacon at home, just like I do at mine. If you like this video, please click down there, like. Subscribe to our channel, all our various media stuff that's going on, so you guys can stay in touch with what we're doing shooting videos like this. And please share this with your friends. It's very important to get it out there and spread the gospel of barbecue, like what we're trying to do with you guys. And always, leave your comments and suggestions below. Comments as to what you thought about this video and suggestions as to what we can do better in the future, or do a video like you see. So, let's start it. So this is uh, one of the uh, videos that we'll be doing in um, our series of how to cure and smoke meats, um, bacon, Canadian bacon, um, various stuff like that. Um, the Canadian bacon was something we were introduced to a long time ago in the form of the Egg McMuffin. It was like Canadian bacon. It was like, whoa, what's this stuff? It's this exotic meat that's created somewhere. Well, little did we know that that Canadian bacon was created in a probably two-step process in some plant somewhere where they inject it with a smoky type brine, send it down the line, cook it, bake it, slice it, put it on said muffin. And uh, we, we liked it, you know, it was just something we liked. And later on, we started eating it and um, stuff like pizzas and, uh, and, and, and it's like, wow, it's something really cool. So then we did a little bit of investigating and come to find out it was nothing more than a cured pork loin that had been smoked. And, you know, being a North Carolinian boy, um, I was like, wow, you know, we thought we knew everything about the pig here in North Carolina. I was like, there, it is something we could learn. So this is one of the things we set out to do. Um, we figured out a recipe that works for us on our smoker. We just thought we'd like to share this with you. So without further ado, let's get into this. Um, this is a pork loin. Uh, it's one third of a pork loin. Basically, when we buy our pork loins, you can get this at the butcher um, or you can buy the whole pork loin. You can buy it at your mega barts, uh, wholesale supply, and places like that. And basically, you can cut it up into three pieces. Pork loin can be used to make boneless pork chops, stuffed pork loin, Canadian bacon. There's a lot of different things you guys can do with this. You can take it, pound it out, and fry it, and have tenderloin sandwiches and stuff like that. But in this video, what we're going to do is, is the Canadian bacon. So the first thing we like to do is, is we like to trim off all of this stuff you see here. Um, this is not fat. This is connective tissue, and more importantly, it's elastin. And it's something that's very chewy. It's something that doesn't break down um, digestive-wise later on. So it's hard to like let our brine to penetrate through it and stuff. And its purpose is to kind of hold the meat together and to keep stuff from going in it. So therefore, we want to remove it. So we'll begin by uh, getting this, this, this silver skin off of here um, and just trimming it up. Um, this is a necessary step. Please don't skip this. Um, if you do, your product will probably, it, it could not cure all the way through. That's one of the uh, repercussions of not getting all this silver skin off. Um, and it, you could end up with a product that was not all the way brined. So that could be a bad thing. It could uh, be one of those things that uh, you go to all this effort to create this product, and then the end result is you get something that's not quite finished. So, so we're going to take uh, our knife and kind of cut through it. And you can see I'm kind of struggling. This is a very, very sharp knife to get through this part of the silver skin here and get down to the pork loin, the part that we're looking for. Now, I will say that this is the end part of the pork loin. It's uh, kind of the, you know, the head part of it, and there's a tail part of it. So there's not a lot of meat on this part per se. So what we found out is, is that this makes the best part for Canadian bacon. But it could be used for other uses as well. So I'm gonna keep whittling away at this while you guys patiently wait and get to the bottom of this meat here in a second. And you can see, like, uh, I, I guess we could call this the neck. It's where muscles come together um, at the end of the uh, pig. And forms this little bit right here that kind of narrows down. But like I said, this is perfect for brining. It's perfect for sandwiches. 
not so perfect for eating like a, uh, a roast. So, leave this little bit on the back. Get this little bit on the side. And there we have it, a little pork loin. Perfect for curing, perfect for smoking, and perfect for making into breakfast sandwiches or um, putting on our pizzas. So there's a trimmed uh, pork loin. So the next part in this process of kind of taking this pork loin, piece of pork loin and creating Canadian bacon is we need to get it into a brine. And what you need is a bag. And this is an oversized two gallon bag, Ziploc bag that I like to use. I like putting the bag in a pan. The reason I like putting it in a pan is this bag may have a puncture in it. Really honestly, I'll probably end up spilling a lot of this water. So, so into the bag with the pork loin, we put in one gallon of water. Into this one gallon of water, we put one cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of ionized salt. I've tried kosher salt, but I found out that the ionized salt, I believe, was a little bit better to me. If you do want to use kosher salt, I recommend using a little bit more, like three quarters of a cup. Cup, somewhere in there, you may be pushing it a little bit with the salinity in this. The next thing is a tablespoon of white pepper. tablespoon of granulated garlic. And last but not least, a tablespoon of pink salt. And that's kind of the, um, the nomenclature that people use a lot. This is not Himalayan table salt at all. This is uh, nitrates. It's a curing salt. Um, prog powder number two, I guess, is the uh, term that you use for it. That is basically two teaspoons of that into the uh, one gallon of water. Um, that's something that you do not want to ingest. It is toxic in, in, in big amounts. Um, it's a natural preservative for people to start freaking out and going, wow, it's chemicals. All right, so once I've done that, the next thing I want to do is I want to seal this bag and try to get out as much air as possible. Kind of tuck the top into there in case the bag ruptures. It hopefully it'll stay in the pan. Now we want to put this into the bottom of the refrigerator and just kind of leave it alone um, for two weeks. However, about every other day you should go in there and flip the bag over. Just keep doing it like that about every two days. And in two weeks, this product should be cured and ready for the smoker. So Go throw this into the uh, refrigerator and wait two weeks. All right, two weeks have passed. Uh, we've got our pork loin here that's been in that brine in the refrigerator. Uh, pulled it out. Uh, you can definitely feel, first thing is how stiff this thing is. I mean, it is firm. Um, Basically, that brine, I know, has penetrated that meat and it's kind of tightened it up. I know it's put some of that salt in there as well to keep it, the moisture in there, um, as well as some of the spices that uh, we used. Um, if you guys remember, this, this loin itself came from um, the end of one of the loins that we trimmed for our bacon-wrapped pork loin, uh, as well as our stuffed loin that um, instead of doing like pork chops or a roast or something like that, we thought we'd make this into something we could use for breakfast. So here's uh, our, our product that we brined. 
Um, the next step of the process is, is I want to put some seasoning on this and then put it onto a smoke into the smoker uh, where I'll bring it up to temp, temp being 145 degrees, and then I will remove it, put it back into the refrigerator to kind of chill it down and be able to store it um, in the refrigerator. I, I keep mine in there. This, this won't last seven days, I'll be honest with you, but um, if you did a whole loin, you could probably chop some of this stuff up and put it in later um, for later use. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and season this product and get it out there onto the smoker. We are using our Redneck Barbecue Lab all-purpose seasoning. Um, it's something that I pretty much, like I said, and I'll keep saying, we use it on everything. I give this piece of uh, pork loin a pretty good, pretty good coat of seasoning. Um, several reasons. One, oops, I like the uh, taste of our barbecue seasoning. And I believe in the finished product, it gives it just a little of something on the outside um, in terms of flavor. So we've got that pork loin that we brine pretty well seasoned. Now I'd like to get it onto the smoker, let it smoke, bring it up to that 145 degree temperature we were talking about, remove it, throw it in the refrigerator, chill it down, and get ready to make it into uh, some breakfast. Okay, folks, we're back uh, again uh, with our Canadian bacon. It finished off um, several hours ago. Uh, immediately once we, we had this cooked, it actually got a little bit hot on me. I went, put it in the refrigerator, let it cool down, chill, um, just so it didn't overcook. Uh, I think the end of it may have overcooked, but we'll see. Um, anyway, let's see what we've got here. And um, one more way to find out, huh? Slice as well. Well, there we go. And you can see the, the texture of the meat itself is glossy. There's a slight pink hue to it. That's where the rub went into it. It's not that it's raw. You can feel the firmness of it. And you know that this, uh, this is product has been cooked and cured properly. Smells wonderful. Looks wonderful. I guess there's only one thing left to do with this bacon is let's find out. Remember that pickling, that, that brine, that pickling spice, all the rub combination that we put into it? You can taste it inside this meat. Um, very, very, very faint uh, aromas of some of the berries, uh, some of the pepper in there. Uh, not salty at all. That's one of the things... Um, when you're, when you're brining something, we'll be very careful about how much salt you have in something because too much salt will make something unpalatable and you can't pull salt out. Whereas if this isn't, if it wasn't salty enough, we could always put salt on it. Um, man, I'm, I'm, I'm actually very happy with this. I was very skeptical at first. Like I said, I kind of overshot the mark. It's a little bit over probably the end, but in the middle, she's right on. The uh, only thing I'm needing right now is just some, some potatoes and some eggs and this Canadian bacon would be good to go. But I'm very pleased with this. So, once again, this is Canadian bacon, um, part of our cured series, the way that we uh, do it at home. Just want to show you guys uh, one more thing that you can do with that pork loin. Um, once again, my name is Jerry Stevenson, Chief Redneck in Charge here at the Redneck Barbecue Lab in Benson, North Carolina, here in the RBL studios with Mike Baker, event webcasting, putting this circus together for you guys of how-to videos and how we do it videos for you on YouTube. If you like this video, show your appreciation down below. Subscribe to this channel. Click on that bell for future notifications of videos in the future. Share this with your friends. Bring them here. Let's spread the gospel of barbecue far and wide. And above all, please leave your suggestions and your comments as to what you thought about this video or what you'd like to see in the future. Once again, folks, like I always say, please be kind, pass on those smiles, be positive. Let's make that world a better place. And it all starts with us. See you guys soon. Love you. Take care.